So you have this cool footage and you want to spice it up by placing some text behind it. But you forgot to use a green screen and now you hate yourself. I hate myself. Well, don't do that. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the rotoscope tool to single out everything that you want without a green screen. To start, I have my footage in a composition and I'm going to look for the rotoscope tool in the toolbar on top. It looks like a person covered with a paintbrush. Then I select the tool and go back to my footage in the timeline. Here I double click on my footage, which will open up a new window, the layer pattern. Panel. This is actually the same panel you use to do motion tracking and other stuff. As you can see, my cursor also changed in a green circle. With this circle, I can start to select my subject that I want to single out. I click and hold and draw a very rough selection inside the subject. And when doing this, I try to stay inside the subject, never drawing outside the lines. And when I release my mouse click, I already get a selection, indicated by this pink line. But as you can see, I will also get this yellow warning bar. This will warn me when my composition settings like the frame rate or viewing resolution is interfering with the rotoscope quality. I had my viewing resolution set to a third for a faster playback, but the rotoscope tool doesn't like that. So I will go back to the composition panel and set the resolution to full. And in the layer panel, you can now see that the warning disappeared. Now, if the rotoscope tool didn't select your entire subject, you can always add more parts by again drawing with your green brush. However, if the tool selected too much, like the background, I can also remove parts of the selection by holding down alt while painting. This will give me a red brush and the possibility to remove stuff. But as you can see, this stupid brush is way too big to fine tune my selection. Luckily, I can adjust the size of my brush by holding down the control or command key while dragging with my mouse. This gives me a lot of fine tuned possibilities. And speaking of fine tuning, I also have the refine edge tool. This tool is mostly used for selecting hair and finer details. When using this tool, I get a blue brush and also a different kind of selection. It also looks a little like x-ray vision. You can easily adjust this to something you find more pleasing to work with. On the bottom of the layer panel, I have four viewing options. The x-ray mode, alpha mode, alpha boundary, and alpha overlay. Just choose whatever you find best to work for you. I mostly work with the alpha boundary or x-ray vision. But okay, I have my perfect rotoscope selection. Let's translate that to my entire footage. However, before I do anything, I first check in the effect controls panel that the version of my roto brush is set to version 3.0. This is the latest version and the best one. Then the only thing left to do is hit the spacebar and let After Effects do its thing. It will now automatically propagate my footage or in other words, analyze and rotoscope. Now sadly, After Effects can still make mistakes. So try to keep an eye on the process and stop when necessary. You can then again fine tune the rotoscope selection. However, when After Effects is really struggling, you can always try to opt for a frame by frame propagation. Just use the control or command key in combination with the arrows to go frame by frame frame forward. This can be more precise sometimes. And look at that, the propagating is done. But now we have to freeze it. This is very important for a faster workflow, because I'm telling After Effects to remember this selection and there's no need to analyze it again. And if by any chance you want to add or remove parts of the selection after freezing, you just have to unfreeze with the same button and do your thing. Now that the freezing is behind us, it's time to adjust the rotoscope mat and Jenik will tell you everything about it. In the effects control panel, under the roto brush effect, I can find the the brush matte property. Here I can start by adding a feather to my matte, making the edge more soft. The contrast I always lower to a value around 10%. This is useful for tightening up the boundaries. The shift edge option I usually never touch as it doesn't do anything for me. Do you guys experience the same problem with this as me? Let me know in the comments. And then lastly I have the reduce shadow option. Again I set this to a lower number. Normally this is a tool to reduce the erratic movement of the edge, but with a higher number I often get this weird ghosting, so I avoid this as much as possible. Next up, we can also adjust the refine edge matte with actually the same settings. Just tweak them until the matte looks good to you. And that's the thing, every rotoscope will have different settings. Sometimes you need more feather or less contrasts. It all depends on the footage. Now I have two more very handy options I want to explain and two personal bonus tips to get better results with rotoscoping. So back to those settings. The first one is motion blur and makes such a big difference. When I enable this, my roto matte will become much more convincing plus it will also hide those weird edges and big movements of my subject. And speaking of hiding weird edges, I can also use the option decontaminate edge colors. If I enable this, you can see the changes it makes. However, sometimes this works like magic and on the other hand, it can also look like crap. So this option is more of a use sometime kind of thing. And now for my bonus tips. I found out that difficult rotoscopes can be helped with an over the top grading. And I mean like really cranking up the contrast and such. Of course, the subject still needs to be visible. 
possible. But what I do is give my footage a nice contrasty color grade and then pre-compose it by right clicking on it and choosing pre-compose. And this step is crucial because if you don't pre-compose it, the roto brush will ignore the color grading. And now I can do a rotoscope that will most of the time be better. And once the rotoscoping is done, I can just disable the color grading inside pre-comp. The next bonus tip is actually something I discovered quite recently and it's not really a hack, but more of an understanding of the settings. Under the roto brush effect, you can find the propagation settings. And with these settings, I can help After Effects do a better job. For instance, I have footage where my subject has bigger movements. Then I can increase the search radius, giving After Effects much more data to work with. And to see this search area, I can enable the viewing button for this. And then you have the enable classic control options. If the rotoscope tool doesn't give the best edge results, you can enable this option to create a hybrid approach, meaning it will combine all the previous roto brush versions with a new one and try to create the best result possible. I enable it sometimes, but never ever touch the other settings, except for the edge detection. If you have footage where the colors of the subject match the background, I would advise you to adjust the edge detection to favor predicted edges. This can help a lot for a better rotoscope. And that was it for rotoscoping. Now, if you want to wade through the move parts of your footage like rotoscoping but more simple, check out the video here on my left and learn everything you need to know about masking. Thank you so much for watching.